Well, welcome to the show. This is the Books and Music Show. There's your disclaimer. There you go. One more time, they tell us it. We're going to talk about Moshe Dayan. The story is the story of my life, and it's uh, Moshe Dayan, the story of my life. That's the book we're going to talk about. And we're going to go into the studio right now. Yeah, right now. I'm Well, actually, I'm going to go in the studio. Tron's already in the studio. Uh oh I'll duck under the camera here. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, well, that didn't work. Okay, so hi. So you have a mic. If you want, you could hold the mic in your hand or you could talk to it through it the way it is. Oh, this is fine. That's okay. fine? Yeah. Okay. So what are we going to do today? Take the oh, floor. Well, we're, we're going to talk about a, the memoir, Moshe Diane's memoir, The Story of My Life. Okay, continue. I'm just going to go Story check the, life, something in there. And it's, it's pretty interesting. It chronicles everything from his birth in pre-independence Israel all the way up to his uh, resignation from politics after the Yom Kippur war, war, although he returned briefly as foreign minister to work on the Camp David Peace Accords. But mostly it covers uh, just everything in, in his life from a political and military standpoint. It also touches on some of, um, some of his personal, personal problems. For example, uh, he's most famous for having a, an eye patch, a black, the black eye patch in, in terms of that's, that's the iconic image that people have of Moshe Dayan. And uh, that was the result of a raid he conducted in Vichy uh, in, uh, into Syria, the Syrian-Lebanon border when it, uh, when it was under the administration of the Vichy government during World War II. It's, it's kind of an interesting book because it, it includes ev everything from uh, the second includes everything from the the Arab revolt against British administration, which is what what actually um, where Moshe Dayan got most of his his formal formal military training, even though he he'd wind up as uh, he was briefly imprisoned by the British for his work in, in the Haganah, the Jewish uh, defense force. Which was set up to to patrol Jew, Jew, to, to uh, well uh, initially to protect Jews from Arab reprisals, but eventually was constituted a an army, a, a standing army that helped to uh, help to gain independence for Israel. And it's kind of interesting because the it starts out in pre-independence Israel, which was mostly rural agricultural it wasn't you didn't have any of these i mean places like tel aviv and Jeru and uh and haifa these gigantic metropolises didn't really exist so a lot of the a lot of the book focuses on on the land because he was also important besides uh, his contributions to the military and uh, diplomacy he was he was also secretary Secretary of uh, Minister of Agriculture, and he he helped to um, integrate Jewish uh, refugees who came back to Israel dur after after the wars of um, the Arab Israeli wars. And it's there's there's a lot of interesting parts about about the book. He he had a fascinating life. He worked as a correspondent for an American newspaper during the Vietnam War and he observed some of the some of the limitations of the American strategy which was to go after the Viet Cong to 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 eliminate the Viet Cong and go after the North Vietnamese army and he kind of he noticed that the the Vietnamese the North Vietnamese the communists were able to use this strategy to trap the Americans and the Americans thought they would just just wipe out 
the v- North Vietnamese once they found them, but it was actually it was like these were usually traps to uh, encircle the Americans and then escape rather than fighting, you know, army to army. So he had a lot of really interesting, uh, really really acute observations about how to about military strategy in general and how to position forces. He was the architect of the Six Day War. Which was so. What about the Six Day War? Um, if you were going to tell somebody about the Six Day War who knows nothing at all about the Six Day War, where would you begin the story, and how would you tell it, the true story? Well, I, the the book itself, it's 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 kind of uh, it's interesting. He he descri- most historians think. Most historians look at it at, look look at look at the strong point as the closure of the Straits of Tehran, um, and access internet access to, to sh- international shipping through through Egypt, and uh, Nasser nationalizing um, nationalizing the Suez, but. There was actually a, a lot of conflict before that. There's so the what, what does that mean? Do you mind if I interrupt with questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what is Nash? I really don't know what that means because I'm I'm not really good at history. Mm-hmm. That is not my best subject. So what does nationalizing the Suez mean to us? Yeah, well, Na- Nasser d- basically decided to t- that he would have Egypt control um, control the Suez Canal and. And the waterways going through e- Egypt, rather than ha- having um, having like, like international, just having it as a as as a port where internationally, I, the main idea was to uh, one of the reasons was to uh, stop Israel since e- e- Egypt and Israel share mm-hmm. share a border. In uh, the Sinai Peninsula, this this was a way of um, of uh, this was k- kind of a way of opening hostilities with with Israel without actually going to war. So Israel decided to attack Egypt first by destroying. Their air force, and uh, that was a huge debate. He he discusses it in in the book wh- wh- uh, whether or not. What does he say about it in the book? Well, he discusses the strategy whether or not they should should seek international approval because there was a huge uh, diplomatic um, logjam. There was he. Th- because Nasser expelled UN, there were UN peacekeepers there, supposedly to to prevent to prevent uh, a reopening of hostilities. Because Egypt and Israel have been fighting each other from um, the time of independence until the um, well, right all the way up through the Yom Kippur War. But but prior to the Six Day War, there was a there were border clashes and uh, bombing raids, so there was a UN. There was a UN force in place there, and he he asked the he told the UN peacekeepers to leave, and he closed the uh, straits, and that was what uh, mo- most historians think precipitated the Six Day War. The fact that it prompted Israel to strike strike against Egypt. And the D- Diane himself was was kind of I, I don't know if you'd call him a he was kind of a mixture he was he, he was a cross between a hawk and a dove because he believed in Jewish Jewish settlements and Israel retaining control of Jerusalem and most of these other uh, territories. In fact, the one of the one of the first chapters he talk he discusses the he explores the debate between him and David Ben Gurion during the War for Independence. How it 
how when it it ended, Jordan had control of the Western Wall and the um, basically the the holiest uh, uh, sites in Jerusalem and how he wanted to he wanted to continue to fight and uh, David Ben Gurion uh, said that it wasn't it wasn't worth the price of reopening the war. So that's that's kind of a a theme in this book. He dis- he discusses how he explores how he was fr- even growing up. He was friendly. He had Bedouin Arab neighbors in neighboring farms, but there was also a conflict between them and the Israelis, uh, the Jewish uh, settlers, who were trying to. Um, trying to create a, a, a Jewish state. And it's something that re- recurs again after the Six-Day War when they move into the West Bank and Gaza and have to negotiate with Arab villagers for, for a new um, kind of a kind of negotiate the, the new status of the, this territory. And that's uh, that's one of the one of the main themes. The one of the two main themes I, I think is the military side. There's a lot of technical technical explanations of of battles because I don't think I th- I th- think a lot of people are um, have have certain certain views of but like for example the the Yom Kippur war he describes it as a victory that anyone else any other country would be would be proud of uh, I don't know if he uses those precise words but something to that effect and yet most Israelis see it as uh, devas- they viewed it as a d- devastating psychologically after the six day war to be caught unaware to have uh, these countries attack again, but uh, these countries at- uh, attack Israel without um, without the military being prepared. So, I mean, he, he gives his own sort of slanted, I guess you would say, viewpoint, but he also, it is p- pretty fair, I think, when uh, it's... In, in, in terms of the broad view, he understands that there was a conflict between uh, Jewish uh, refugees and settlers and um, and the people within within um, Palestine at the time, which is what the which was what it, what it was called for um, independence. It was administered by by Turkey and then the, the Ottoman Empire and then Great Britain. So, what was the name of the book that we're recommending? Or it was a good story. It was a good book. Yeah. The name of the book and when it was written. Story of my life. It was written in 1976. It 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 ends when it ends before he was foreign minister briefly after after this book, and he worked on the Camp David Accords, the, which was the peace treaty with Egypt. So, what was he doing when he wrote this book? What what was his position? When he was writing this as like an autobiography. Oh, I'm, I just realized I'm not talking into the mic. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if anybody heard me. I said, what was his position? When he was writing this book, when he was putting it together, writing it, publishing it, what was his position? Where was he at that time when he was actually writing the book? Um, I think he was he was retired. In fact, one of the... It was 1976, it's a, that was the year it was written? Yeah, w- one of the last the last two chapters are out of office in a new reality. So I think this was oh. when he was when when he was retired. So I have a question. So exactly what happened to Moshe Dayan? I was out of the studio when you were doing a lot of the talk, so I don't know if you answered that question already. But I walked in and out, so I missed oh. that. So what what happened to, to Moshe Dayan? Oh well, uh, eventually, like I said, this was written right bef- uh, before 
uh, I think it's 76, so a couple of years later, he th- he joined the cabinet of Menachem Begin and, and worked on the Camp David Accords. And he, w- he was, which was unusual. I, th- that's another part of the book he describes, because he was also a politician. He wasn't just a, a general, the mi- minister of defense and uh, army chief of staff. He was also he was also a politician who worked for the um, the Mapai, the Labor Party. So he joined Menachem Begin, Begin's government, even though he was ostensibly from 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 a different party, because he felt that it was uh, in the national interest. Oh, so now how is the biography written? If somebody's going to read this book, or if you're going to recommend it to somebody, like what kind of style is it written? Is it like it's a lot of pages, so we haven't yeah. told you everything about the book. But um, so, how's the biography written? It's written. Uh, there's a lot of. I mean, there is a lot of technical details, but it's also it's not ri- it's not uh, too heavy on uh, on on jargon. I mean, if you if you if you're interested in. Uh, military history or or j- just hi- Middle Eastern history in general, I'd say it's a good a good book, a good book to read, and it's not too too difficult to um, decipher. So um, this was a guy who had the eye patch, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. why was he always wearing an eye patch? Oh well, I. I mentioned that earlier, but... Oh, I was, was in the studio. I didn't hear you. No, no, Sorry. no, it's okay. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, he was... For anybody who was out getting a sandwich, go ahead, tell me he again. He was basically... Uh, he was... He worked... He was enlisted by the British, him and other... Uh, him and other uh, Jewish... Pal- uh, Jewish settlers in Palestine were enlisted by the British... To in in the war effort in World War II because Hitler was threatening, threatening the Middle East. He, Rommel was making advances in Egypt, and they they Britain didn't want didn't want um, Israel and Iraq and other other nations in control to 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 fall into the hands of the Axis. So so Moshe Dayan was. Uh, joined the effort to fight um, the Vichy government in in Syria and Lebanon, which controlled, which was was a, was allied with with Hitler, and and the the access. So he on a raid in one of on, on a raid uh, on one of the police stations controlled by the, by the Vichy. He. He had a bullet go through a pair of binoculars, and the glass Im- uh, embedded itself inside in, in, in his eye. Wow. And um, according to him, that prevented him from bleeding, but it also destroyed uh, some of his nerves, so he wasn't able to regain his sight, and he also wasn't able to uh, get rid of the eye patch he had surgery to try to. He had surgery to try to uh, fit him. They fi- they tried to fit him with a glass eye or, or an artificial, an artificial eye, but it didn't work, and he was in the hospital for for weeks. So uh, he wasn't able to. Yeah, he, he. Th- that's why he. Had, he had the eye patch basically. Okay, so I've seen this word a million times, epilogue. So the epilogue, I'm guessing, is still written by him? Uh, probably, I would, yeah. I would the epilogue, so. maybe. These are his own words. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess if I, I have not read the book. I have read some of the book, which is probably what I do with a lot of books. I read some of the book, um, and then I'll get to finish it someday. But I'm going to read some of it. Is that all right if I read some? Mm-hmm. Oh, you can read some too? Yeah. So I want to read some of this book. It's called um, Moshe Dayan, The Story of My Life. It was written in 1976. 
I'm going to read the, shall I read the last lines? How many people are going to get the book and read it? And I'm going to read the last lines. I should read the whole thing. Maybe you should read the beginning. See, you tuned into the Books and Music show. We air on Saturdays at 12.30 in the daytime. It's a daytime show. It's a family show. And we talk about everything from camping to ants to nature to history to politics to a lot of interesting shows on uh, how-to shows and helpful hint shows and you name it, we've talked about it. Write to us and we'll uh, send you our websites. I'll write to books.musicreview at gmail.com. And so in the words of Moshe Diane, year after year, for thousands of years, the flash floods burst through the wadi. I don't know how to say that. Is that wadi? A yeah. W-A-D-I-S, mm -hmm. wadis? Tearing at the slopes in the frenzy of erosion. What had been once the center of a hill, a haven for the quake cave dwellers, uh, ages past, had now become the wall of a riverbed, its stones curiously exposed and out of place, the stones that had caught my eye. Apparently he had been, um, it was summer, and it was seven years after, after seven years in the defense ministry, I returned to civilian life. So it says he was uh, out in his car and, Let's see. Don't you love it when I read from <laughs> Wait, wait, I'll finish. It says, the nights were undisturbed by the telephone, and there was no, I guess he was like kind of, it doesn't say, but he's like kind of like out camping. And there was no dashing to the office in the morning. I spent my first free day out of the government at Nahal Besheba, a wadi in the, Neg how do you say, Negev? Negev. Negev Desert. That year we'd enjoyed a very wet winter, I remembered the rains pouring down the slopes of the Hebron Hills, stream, streaming southward and producing flash floods in the desert wadis. The waters rushing through those normally dry riverbeds and overflowing their bunks soften the sides of the gullies and cause great chunks of the earth to crumble. So I went south. And it was now early summer, and the water had vanished but not its impact. I drove along the edge of the winding Beersheba Wadi and at one of the bends, I saw that I had hoped to find glinting in the sunlight were several thousand, several white stones embedded in the middle of the north wall of the gully and they were oddly out of place. 6,000 years ago, this area was inhabited by people who were existing by hunting and pasture. They lived in caves burrowed in the hillside and the narrow openings to make them easier to defend. The interior of the cave would be broad and comparatively high. A strip of floor skirting the walls would be paved with stones, usually small stones, taken from the gully to serve probably with a con covering of animal skins as sleeping pallets. It's kind of an interesting book. This is the epilogue. This is the last pages of the book. Yeah. There's but um, kind of interesting. What did you, um, I don't know if you read the whole entire book or read most of the book or some of the book, but from what you read, what did you find was the most interesting part of the book? Uh, there's there's a lot of interesting things. I mean, you, you mentioned the land there. There's, there. there's a lot of interesting, fascinating details about the archaeological sites Ah. Because that was also also something that came up when Israel uh, captured captured um, Samaria and and parts of the territory that 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 were controlled by by Jordan and by by Jordan primarily. Um, you know, there's there, there's so many ancient sites like uh, Joseph's tomb and Rachel's tomb and all these biblical area areas where uh, the pool of Silo. There's so, what is Joseph's tomb? We only have like five minutes and fifteen seconds left. What is Joseph's tomb? Yeah, there's it's it's. I mean, it's just that it's the the tomb of 
Joseph. It's it. it Some it's people a holy site. watching might not know which uh, Joseph who. Jo- Whom? Joseph. Uh, which Joseph? Joseph from the the Bible. <laughs> oh, okay. See, it pays to ask questions. Yeah. I thought you meant that, but I didn't want to just make the assumption. Yeah. So so there's a uh, there's. Um, there, there, are, there are so many different archaeological sites where uh, um, Jewish and, and Christian sites that were 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 uncovered, and they're they're they're, st- they're, they're still and there's pictures being in the book too of some things. I don't know yeah. what what their illustrations of. Did you see any of the pictures? Yeah, yeah. I looked so at what those. what are the black and white pictures? Yeah. So what what are the pictures of in that book? Which is a fabulous book. I should show the book, right? This is what the book looks like. It's called Moshe Dayan, Story of My Life by Moshe Dayan. Mm-hmm. That's good. The pictures you saw, four minutes. Yeah, the pictures. Yeah, they're the pictures are. It, it's pretty fun to look at s- some of the pictures. But they're all kind of. It's a. It's an old book, so they're kind of uh, age. These black and white photos of. Him having um, original him, black and white photojournalism, yeah. right? Yeah, him with uh, Golda Meir ah. and uh, David Ben Gurion and uh, and in a cave. There was a picture of a cave there too. Okay, so three minutes and thirty-one seconds. So I'll have to close the show in a few minutes. I'm totally thrilled that you got to talk about this book because that's a really good book, and you know what you're talking about, which is really cool. Um, what can I say? I recommend the book. So go to your library and see if it's in the bu- library. And if it's not in the library, you don't like ask your librarian. Yes. This is one thing you can do. If you're looking for a good book and it's not in the library, go to your librarian and ask them to bring it to your library. It's in some library somewhere. So they can like you know ship it from another library or maybe go to the publisher and buy some copies. This was written a long time ago. Yeah, I wonder who will publish that. It should be in print. I guess I, I can. Do you have it. anything more to say? We got two minutes. Just write to books.musicreview at gmail dot com. Oh, so by there's two other the diary of the Sinai campaign. There's another book, and this particular one was published by I don't know. It was writing in uh, what Chinese or Korean or something. I don't know who this was published by, but we did a pretty good book summary. Review. I hope you got people interested in this book and um, in other history books. Mm-hmm. It'd be kind of cool. Yeah, it's an interesting subject. Uh, you can see this show again. If you're not seeing it now, it's Saturday at 1230. Go to Saturday at 1230, Channel 34, Verizon, Spectrum, and Time Warner. Oh, Spectrum is the same as Time Warner. Um, any other good books you want to recommend that we don't have with us, but any anything interesting you might think anybody might want to read on any topic? On any topic. I'm on trying any to think topic. There, 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 there are a lot of good books about the Middle East. Yeah, um, keep talking. There are a lot of good books about the Middle East. This one is uh, told from a personal perspective of s- someone who was intimately involved in, in shaping the Middle East. So... Um, I can't think of, I can't, I can't think of them off the top of my head. But uh, it's definitely something. If you, if you're a history buff or you're you're into international affairs, it's definitely something worth investigating, because there's so many. There were so many pivotal moments in the uh, middle. Uh, in in Israel was a central focus of the Cold War. And the relationship between Israel and the United States is. Um, incredibly important, something that's been that's dominated politics for years. So it's definitely worth um, finding, finding, uh, seeking out information about the subject if you're if you're even mildly curious. Well, I'm glad I talked. Uh, I heard about it. It's pretty good. Um, we have like 40, 34 seconds to go and watch the show. We talk about all different topics. If you're interested in being a guest or a just contact us. We'll give you more information. And this is the Books and Music Review Show. We do art, music, talent, actress, actors, poetry, writing, any topic, pretty much any topic that you're interested in. 
Oh, show's almost, almost over. I think we'll close down now in uh, one second. Thanks for watching very much.